Hi, Matt Fulton here for mattfulton.com.au. What you're about to hear is from my own personal collection. It's two interviews, but one special guest. In fact, it was a group. Spider Bait, the trio from Finlay, New South Wales, I was in love with. Still appreciate their work now. Please don't get me wrong with that. In my late teens and early 20s, I was obsessed with them. In fact, when they did a tour in 2004, for six months, I followed them around the New South Wales area, Wollongong, Sweeney's, Penrith, and other Sydney gigs. Now, at the time, I was in community radio, and I really wanted to do my first type of interview for my show. I was embarrassed. I still get a bit shy when I do meet big name people or any type of personalities, which I respect. So I was really nervous when I actually had a chance to interview these guys. And these guys being Cram, Janet, and Wit. So there are two interviews. The first one was at Sweeney's in 2004, where I actually caught up with the guys behind stage. And unfortunately, I had laryngitis. And it was terrible. I was so embarrassed the way I spoke. I couldn't really get any words out. I even had a couple of friends along with me who I was hoping they could ask some questions, but they shied away and they're going, go on, you can do it. Talk no matter what. So I did. And then I also realized that there was the stage band. I think it was Hoodoo Gurus, but they were starting to warm up on the front stage. So I had this little bit of time and horrible acoustics. Plus I was recording it on a mini disc recorder with this tiny, tiny microphone and it was just being held together if I clenched my fist. So instead of editing it up, I'm going to provide you with the raw, unedited version. So I apologize if there's bits and pieces that you can't really hear because of guitar noise or me fiddling with the microphone, but I just want to show how raw and authentic these guys are and how the interview was. So here's the first part with Cram, Janet and Wit from Spiderbait at Sweeney's in 2004. I've got an so uh, I've lost half my voice anyway, so I've got uh, Catherine and... Uh, Sorry. Yeah, to, to back me up in case. Yeah. You don't mind, do you? No, not at all. I'll try not to keep too much of your time. Do you mind if I just start with you? or? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, just a mixer. Yeah, no, it's up. It's too late. Sorry. Yes. Okay, here we go. Alright, starting off with uh, interviewing for spider bait, so this, any of the stuff, whatever, I swear or whatever, I just edited it up. Like, so, so feel free to say whatever you want. Fuck shit, fuck. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, first of all, um, congratulations on getting the um, number three on the ARIA charts as well. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> do you actually, um, so what, I think your last hit was, uh, oh, uh, last hit was, um, I think it was Monty, that got up to number 11. <laughs> Uh, no, Calypso. 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 Sorry, yeah, sorry, my apologies. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Um, so that's the first time we've um, had yeah. top, 10. top 10. Yeah, sorry, I'm extremely nervous at the moment. Right, so well, I worship you. Do you want to sit anyway. on the piano? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I brought a cheat sheet with me, so. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> no worries, okay. First of all, um, it's like, actually, how did you come up with the name Spider Bait? When you were previously called Candy Spuds, or that was the rumour anyway, so. Um, yeah, we did one gig as Candy Spuds, and that was Graham and mine's, uh, we had a joint 21st, so that was a one-off show, sorry. No, that's alright. <laughs> um, but yeah, Spider Baby came from a, a B-grade 50s film about a little girl who had psychic powers, and um, we had that for six months, and we did our first single, um, we found out there's another band from California with oh. the same name. Okay. So we changed it to Spidosaurus. For one show, and then quickly got rid of that, and uh, changing to Spider Bait. So it was a massive group decision, or you? Uh, we just knew it wasn't right, but we did like Spider Baby at the time. We didn't want to change it. Okay. So, um, is it a group effort um, when writing the songs, or do you write them individually, or how, actually, how do you really make them so catchy as well? Well, they, they come in all manner of deliveries, really. Um, come around from all of us sitting around playing and then um, just sort of developing a, you know, a melody or an idea for a particular riff. Other times, um, complete, songs can be completely finished by one person and it's just a matter of bringing them along and getting everyone to play through. Okay, and uh, what, uh, what bands are your biggest influence? Like, um, 
what you brought up on, really. Bananarama. <laughs> the Uruguay. Plus, we said this is the Manies, the Hard Ons, anything. Yeah, definitely. All those kind of punk, early punk yeah. bands. Dead Kennedys, Black yeah. Flag. Just um, a various lot. Yeah. Carpenters. 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 I really like it. We like it. We like everything. ACDC. We love everything. I saw an ACDC tribute band last night actually, called Dirty Deeds. Oh yeah, oh, yeah anyway, come around and come around a lot. <laughs> we we, we were like on only AM radio so you just had to take what you got. So everyone developed a taste for almost every style of music because that's what they play. You know? yeah. And when we got to Melbourne we got into like, we went down to boarding school and um, while we were still in high school, up in Finland, and he used to bring home a lot of more alternative stuff as our first sort of like um, hear, hearing alternative music, which is pretty exciting. Which is, um, when we all made it down there together, um, that's when we got into punk rock. And, yeah, it's all good. Okay, so you, it's a wide range, really. Uh, so you've experienced that, uh, well, with your previous album, with a lot of Wally Funky experienced, uh, well, sorry, not experienced, experimented with uh, electronic music and just bits and pieces all over. Um, what, with your new album, Tonight I'll Ride, what made you go back to your similar style, like your original? Um, I, think, I, I think the way we play music is pretty much pretty similar, you know, compared to the last record, compared to this one, but stylistically they're different genres. Sorry, that was my So even when we do, um, no, this is, we ask this all the time. Yeah. Um, Whereas, like, even when we're doing electronic, like, uh, obviously we started off playing, you know, heavy rock, sort of punk, a lot of hardcore stuff early on, and going back to that, those sort of roots, I suppose, um, this time round was really quite easy. It was more subconscious, it wasn't really something I really had to work on. We did write quite a lot of stuff on the sampler, though, for this album. For this yeah, album. but we just ended up not using it because we just thought, oh, it doesn't really fit, you know, it was not good stuff, but we thought, oh, no, let's make it a little bit more simple. Yeah. Yeah. And even we got sick of carrying it around as well. Yeah, I got sick of carrying the sampler around. <laughs> but, <laughs> but and even when we were writing electronic stuff, it was still, uh, still had all the elements that we, you know, put into, you know, a rock song, for want of a better expression. Um, there's usually a good sense of humour and a good sense of groove and, and funk, even when playing, you know, fairly, even almost metal stuff. So, <coughs> so um, it's kind of same stuff, but a different flavour. All right. So, but you still got a hint, or there's always an essence of, uh, you know, it's quite like, no matter which album you go for. So Definitely. You, yeah, I can always pick it anyway, so. Being a big fan at all. Um, who decides on naming the albums, actually? Uh, like, two that really stand out, in my own opinion, was Sasha for Glover, which, well, you know, biggest laugh in the Croatia for a dickhead, really. Mm. And then you got the unfinished Spanish Galley and the Finn. They've the all Lake. come up through different ways. Um, Shasha for Glover came up through a friend of Janet's, George, who's um, uh, Serbian, or was he? Yes, yeah, Serbian. Serbian. Yeah. Shasha for Glover means dickhead, and we just, it sounded great, and we laughed even harder when we had the meaning, so <laughs> that was great. No, Tony and Kipper Bang was a movie that Cram and I watched. Yep. Played about two o'clock in the morning, um, which was sort of loosely based on this little kid um, uh, who had a other bunch, a group of mates, and they, every time they greet each other, they go Tony and Kipper Bang. Uh, the, un the unfinished Spanish going in Finley Lake. Cram came up with after we were yeah, joking yeah, about this boat um, in Finley that obviously got unfinished. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and. Um, Ivy the Big Apples came from a headline in our local newspaper in Finley that Janet came across in time. Grand Slam, um, that was just one that I came up with out of nowhere. Um, Flight of Wally Funk was Wally Funk was Melbourne Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody. Yeah, we went out orbit <laughs> <laughs> so really just whatever sounds good at the time. Okay. Uh, so who gets also to choose uh, the songs on the albums? Is it the record companies or do you actually get a choice in what you want in the album? I'm uh, sorry, what's on the songs? Sorry, yeah, my apologies. Like, who gets to choose what songs go on each album that you produce? Uh, we do. You do, so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was scratch that one. <laughs> no, no. No, I just know that previous bands like they make some, and then um, there's also the big side, B sides as mm. well. So um, we talk, we communicate with our label to, as to which songs they want to 
go on the record, but pretty, oh, not, but not really, you know. They just want to, they just have the singles on it. Okay. Um, any particular songs that you've written um, have any personal meaning to them at all? No, none of them. <laughs> none of them. So they're just pretty much straight out. You just think of something in your head. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And it's, you know, it's just up to... That's a beautiful thing about music. I guess you... I listen to songs and, and take what I want from them and interpret them how I want them. So, um, yeah, it's, it's... I don't often like to hear people tell where the songs come from because you come up with your own. Yeah. Ideas about them? Sort of, yeah. That's understandable. Yeah. So, <coughs> that's okay. I'll just edit that later. <laughs> okay, um. Oh, I'm just cramming here because I need to ask each one of you, but that's okay. Um. Uh, what? What, what are each of your favourite songs? Supply. Yeah. Your own little personal favourite. I don't know, it changes all the time. Whichever one's the crowd like. <coughs> no. <laughs> My personal favourite's footy. Yeah, that's enough. We haven't played that for a while. I've always played in Melbourne just because it's a footy town, I guess. Mm. So do you won't, when you perform? Do you perform in uh, Finley and play it there? Or? We played there once, maybe mm. before Christmas. Do we play footy? I can't remember. The song. We kicked the footy. No, we played in Finland. We played, <laughs> yeah. played the kick. The footy gig. Yeah. We played the gig. Yeah, it's a pretty good theme song. I don't know. It should get rid of Peter Gurus and put your song on it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can do it. Um, so you have played at large, you know, played at large performances overseas. Uh, what is your favourite gig that you've ever done over there? Any, in any country? Overseas. Yeah. <laughs> Different. Japan? Yeah, Japan was pretty good. Actually, Japan was probably the first place I, that I can think of. The only place I can think of where nobody whistled or went woohoo. They know. just clapped. Yeah, they just clapped. They're very polite. Yeah, very polite, <laughs> very um, yeah. etiquette. Yeah. So, a strong point. Yeah. Um, so, what's your favourite venue you played at in Australia? Um, bit of a toughie. We played at Lee Kernigan's. Rodeo ring in Rockhampton <laughs> six weeks ago with Hootie Gurus. That was pretty good fun. We were prepared for the worst at first, but um, that turned out alright, didn't it? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> so, um, for the up and coming garage bands, um, how hard was it to get a record deal, really? Um, and any advice on what, uh, like, to get the record manager's attention? I guess we were lucky because we were in Melbourne for a start, which is a band town. All of our friends were in bands, so we had contacts. We were playing a lot of shows. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's so hard to, to answer, isn't it? It's, it's a lot of luck, but it's just a lot of self-belief, I suppose, as well. Um, mm, just keep optimistic. <laughs> yeah, well, just well, it's love, weird for it, love it? what you're doing, maybe. Yeah, you know, well... And you, how many people actually get signed, really? Well, it was weird for us because when we first started, we were actually proud of the fact that there was no way known in, in the way on earth was that mainstream radio or anyone was going to play our stuff. And we loved that. And we loved it because <laughs> we hated. Yeah, no we, prospects. Because we hated. Enough. We hated music. Music at the time was really so pretty boring. fucked. Yeah. And um, so I guess you know what we're doing was a re- it wasn't a reaction. It was, it was a reaction against the it. Was, we didn't start it going right. We've got to get our shit together. We've got to, you know, get a press release and uh, photos and demos and send them out to everybody and keep calling, you know, and do all those. We never looked at it professionally, did, did we? No. No. So just full determination, just keep going until. It was just a, a stack of friends playing live music to each other. Really, we never thought we'd make a record or, you know, end up playing right now, music yeah. or anything. No, it's mm. just like what you did on the weekends because you. Went out and saw bands all playing the band. Yeah, it's just a social thing. Yeah. It was like joining a sports club. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like going down and play bingo every Friday night, except we yeah. go down and play, play music. music. Yeah. So where and where would you see Spider Bait in about five to ten years' time? Don't know. Or is that a bit of a toughie? Oh, five to ten. Who knows? Yeah. 
Yeah. Live life to the fullest. We don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you're doing. You to the Vitaguru. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's been going for 10 years. You got, you got one month. Yeah, this too. It's like it's been going for Yeah, you've like one month left with Vitaguru. So. Yeah, we've already done oh, yeah. six weeks. Uh, yeah, tonight was the 25th show. Out of, out of 48. Just over halfway. Man, no one tours like those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Community Radio rocks. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there you go. I hope you get over that cringe factor. Well, I haven't, but fingers crossed that releasing this <laughs> might make me feel a little bit better. Now, the second interview, which was about three to four months later, they were still touring and they were basically coming around full circle after going around Australia. This time they were performing at Penrith Panthers Leagues. And so I went in there and asked if I can do a follow-up. By then, Black Betty had reached number one on the music charts. Now, there's a story about how I found out that Black Betty was number one on the ARIA charts. It was me who told him. I sent him a text. It was midnight. I hit refresh on the ARIA chart website and went from three to one. And so I just happened at the time to have Wits Mobile. I sent him a text saying, hey, mate, congratulations. You're number one on the ARIA charts. And then he called me back and he said, are you sure about that? Because we're in Adelaide right now. It's only 11.30. And I'm saying, yep, it's midnight here. Hit refresh and bam, it's up there. He goes, oh, sweet. I'll celebrate. They thanked me for passing on the news and their manager was really happy. So not long after that, I caught up with them at Penrith Panthers. And I had this awesome, awesome interview with the same mini disc player and everything. It went great. It went for about 10 minutes. This is before they were about to go on stage. And because the mini disc was so fragile, I had to hold it in a certain spot. Now my thumb went numb for holding it for so long. So I didn't know what to do when my thumb went completely numb and the entire recording on this mini disc completely erased. I was shitting myself because I asked them such passionate questions only a fan would really want to ask them instead of the stereotypical, you know, from the magazine or TV show and stuff like that. They were really appreciative of it and I had lost it all. And then when they realized what had happened, they said, oh, ask us again, go on. And I'm thinking, oh crap, you're about to go on stage in about five minutes. But they were so nice. They go, no, 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 start all over again and we'll do this again. So here's part two, which is just basically a second interview. And here it is in the raw. So when you hear a bit of kerfuffle going on about, ah, oh, you know, I can't believe I lost the original recording. They were very, very supportive and very helpful. So this is just Wit and Janet having a chat with me just to follow up on how things were going with their tour and having Black Betty being number one on the ARIA charts. <laughs> if so, I'll just make this really quick. Okay, I'll assume cool. they're already on there. That's just cool, draw once again. I didn't realize. <laughs> It mightn't have. You I might, lost it. You mightn't have hit it for ages. The know? whole thing. I lost the whole thing. That's oh, alright. No, I'll, I'll make this really short. I'm so sorry. That's, That's alright. Okay. Do it again. <laughs> what are we talking about? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll ask you the, the, the ones that I was mainly asking for. I just I'm yeah. so embarrassed like now. Again, we're just giving quicker answers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you, in, how do you enjoy? How have you enjoyed the success of um, Black Betty getting number one? Oh <laughs> yeah, it's been good. <laughs> No, it's recording. Yeah, it's yeah. recording. <laughs> um, it's been great. I mean, fuck, we've been playing for 14 years, and um, it was pr- it was a bit like we sort of made a dis- decision to do it, and we we're really happy with the recording of it, and we really liked that song, and Cram really wanted to sing it because it suited his voice, and um, um, and it's pretty flattering, like people saying that we've really sort of made it our own, and, and people say that better than the original and all that sort of thing but I don't know it's kind of I think it's cool just for um, being able to do a cover of a song that's kind of celebrating what you like about music like it was a song that we really liked when we were teenagers rather than writing it for it to be a hit you know we weren't even sure if it was going to be a single or anything when we were recording it Mm. but we were really happy with the way it came out but um, yeah of course it's been great Will you guys release a DVD at all? Yeah, definitely. Next year. Well, um, <laughs> next year. You've decided on that. Well, it would well, be great it. because there's, yeah. so, there's so much um, more to the, the... There's only... Like when you put a record out, you, you can only release like, you know, 12 songs and it's... it's. But there's so much more to the, the band. Like I know as a fan watching 
DVDs of other bands. Like the other day, I watched Go to Island Midnight concert, Oil. Midnight Oil, and um, it was great. Just really kind of um, just kind of reignited that, got me back in touch with that feeling of being a real fan of a band, and particularly it being as good as I remember it being, yeah. rather than. Um, for example, like when you're young, you have your favourite TV shows and then you see them now and they're crap. Mm. You know, and you just think it's stupid, like chips yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> chips of hazard or something. But, um, but it, was a, it was a really good concert and it, I don't know, I suppose, thinking like about music and playing in a band, and particularly this band, is that you see people like every night and play get something out of you know, music that um, if people can can get something out of it that is similar to you know what I got out of it when I was a kid, then I think that's you know that means something to me, and I think that's that's really cool. Mm. So. Mm. Yeah. And uh, most of all, uh, it's really oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. There's some other stuff, but I'll, I'll, we're running out of time for you guys. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'll just really. I'll just get the status the rest of it. Um, would you be able to, would you be able to do a station ID? Would yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Cool. Okay, um, the radio station's two MCR, um, one hundred, yeah, one hundred point three. Okay. okay. Hi, this is Janet from Spiderbait. This is Rich from Spiderbait. You're listening to two MCR. <laughs> Let's do the M. We should do the MCR thing first. No, no, I'll keep that one so I can do that as a blooper anyway. <laughs> what is it, 2 MCR? 2 MCR, in MacArthur Community Radio. Okay, um, 2 MCR. And yeah. what's the other one? 100.3. Oh. Okay, I'll do 100.3. Okay. You do 2 MCR. Okay. MC. I got it. Uh, yeah, I got it. MCA. I got it. MCR. <laughs> hey, this is Jennifer from Spider Bay. Hey, this is Rich from Spider Bay, and you're listening to 2 MCR. 100.3 on the dive. Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And there you have it. Thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate the time and effort that you decided to listen to my goofs and errors, but I just wanted to share the love of this interview, or well, these two interviews, and fingers crossed, I hope I get to catch up with them some way, somehow, in a more professional stance. I've learned a lot since then. Anyway, this is Matt Fulton for mattfulton.com.au. Thank you very much. Have a great day.